Was that a hit or a miss? Wait till the end of the episode to find out. Thank you for tuning in to Sense Per Mile. I'm your host, Charles Gracie. And I'm your co-host, Paul Gibson. Uh, before we get started, a couple things. Uh, if you could, like, subscribe, rate if you enjoy what we're doing here today, uh, wherever you listen or watch your podcast. Secondly, uh, before we get started, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but next episode, we're going to be talking about um, the potential speed limiter rules that are that are coming out. Uh, we got a lot of interesting people, and um, I'd like to make an invite to anybody who is a member or a part of the ATA who would like to come on and uh, give their take about that. Anyway, um, so, Josh, what are we talking about today? Today we have a full episode, gentlemen. We have a special guest. We've got some news, and we've got the recruiting game. Uh, not in that particular order because that just seems weird. Uh, but I'm going to send it to you guys for the news. Charles, hit me. What do you got today? What's uh, what's our news today? You know, so today, instead of picking one set of news topics to cover, we're going to cover the popular topic of the falsified logs. Falsified logs. This is one of those topics that's been going around and, and gaining momentum. The reason it's gaining momentum is people are actually dying. Um, you know, these trucks are crashing. These companies that are allowing these falsified logs to operate in their system so the drivers can work illegally on the road. They're putting the general motoring public in danger. These are people like myself, my wife, my kid, your kids, your wives. Um, it, yeah, it, it's just wrong. I mean, this is wrong. And uh, I will say from my experience, I have personally witnessed these systems and they were wrong then and they are even more wrong now and dot needs to absolutely get out there and shut these carriers down yeah well uh my question that i normally go to you uh where's the money in stopping it well i, I think the money would be in saving on these nuclear verdicts like uh when these trucks get into crash and kill somebody and then they, it's discovered that they're using falsified logs and these systems are designed and some of them are even endorsed by people that shouldn't be sitting in positions that they're in. Okay. Well, my question is, is sure. So the nuclear verdicts uh, cause, you know, a, a huge cost for the carrier, but the carrier is the one, uh, well, so is the driver, unfortunately, who is usually just, you know, basically stuck being uh, an asset more than a person. Uh, but where is, where, what would financially make sense to stop it? Uh, cause I mean, at that point, insurance companies are making money and well, we all know that's where a lot of the legislation comes from. Yeah. And I think what it comes down to is realizing that these are real people. These are really, uh, real people with real lives and you don't get a redo. You don't get to hit the reset button. You don't get to start the level over again. I mean, once these people die, they're gone. And these are real people, again, we're talking about. These are our drivers that we all like to preach about how much they're valuable to us and, and how important they are to this industry and to this nation and to this world. Um, we need to start walking the walk, not just talking about it. And I think that starts with people publicly shaming these companies. And that, that's what I'm doing right now. And uh, we've had this discussion. This is just wrong to go out there and tell a driver that, hey, you're out of hours legally, you know, that the whole hours of service thing, we can have a whole nother discussion on that. But legally speaking, you should not have ghost logs or systems out there that are de designed to find a loophole or create a loophole where a driver can run illegally, putting the rest of the general motor in public and that driver and their family at a disservice because they could potentially injure or kill somebody that could be life altering. At the same time, drivers you are the captain of your ship. If you're working at a company that's using illegal logbooks, and what do I mean by that? I'm meaning, hey, you're out of hours. Again, that's a whole nother argument that could be made. But in this particular case, we're saying if you have a company that's asking you to run under falsified logs or a BS log system that's creating a new driver profile or a ghost driver so you can operate illegally, stop. Tell them no, report them, take pictures, take video, and send it in. Start publicly shaming these companies that are putting your life at risk, putting other people's lives at risk. Hell, send them into the show. I will publicly put them on showcase myself. 
So here's here's my the 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 my interesting take on this. I think because I do agree, uh, especially because the blame always does end up going to the driver, which you know I obviously we would both agree is is bullshit most of the time. That being said, um, yes, this is bad. So, but if you legislate against it when it's already people doing illegal things, is that going to help? It's kind of like the conservative conservative gun argument that people are going to find you know guns anywhere. But that being said, too, when you have the current system that's legally in place and it's been proven since uh, the ELD mandate has been implemented, the legal version of that has caused fatalities to increase too. So it almost seems like you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. And I can see your point there, but I don't agree with it. And the reason I don't agree with it is there's a way to do things. All right. And when you put the driver in this situation where they're operating under these conditions and something goes wrong, which it's, it, it becomes a win, not if the driver's immediately at fault because they allowed this to happen. They are the captain of that ship. They are the end all be all for anything that happens in that truck. Even if, even if they're running hours legally, it still becomes the driver's yes, fault. Yes, but if they're operating legally and an accident happens, hey, they might be at fault. They might, if they were negligent, doing something they weren't supposed to, but they're not going to be facing the repercussions as if you were running illegally. They put these drivers and their families in situations that could be avoided by doing it the right way. You want to change stuff? You change it the right way. You rally together to change it. What shouldn't be happening is companies to operate illegally that gives them an unfair advantage and puts the drivers in precarious situations not only risking their health and safety and lives but others around them your wife your kids are on these roads how would you feel if a driver running on illegal logs took them out i would agree and and i think that yeah i think the one thing that we can definitely agree on with all of that i think uh, a big takeaway is that you know that's that's one more situation where uh, even though you know the driver made a choice, but the the company is is uh, complicit, if not even I would say more guilty. And it's it's frustrating that it's the driver is the one that's facing the jail time. And you know, if the company is letting you falsify records or they're wanting to falsify records, they're definitely not a company that's going to have the driver's back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, like they're not going to be one that's going to stand in your corner. You're going to be the one that's going to be screwed. And as much as I would like to talk about this more, gentlemen, uh, we are pushed for time. Uh, we do have a special guest on today, uh, uh, Michael Lombard. Hey, Michael. Uh, glad to have you on. Hey, what's going on, guys? Glad to be here. So tell us a little bit about what you got going on. I mean, I saw you were on the news and not in the bad way where it was like a fiery wreck or anything. You were on there. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you got you on the news. Yeah, some good some good trucking in the news. So uh, that, that news segment uh, I, we, I did with Fox 35 Orlando back in March. They, uh, they had found out who I was because I was, I've been trying to reach out to media sources about truck parking. And uh, it just so happened I was in the Orlando area and I had used a, a third party service to kind of find parking in the Orlando area. And uh, I, I do this a lot. I'm doing this back in Central Texas and trying to get a hold of news people because truck parking is an issue in the industry. And when I was talking to people from Fox 35, they wa- definitely wanted to do a truck parking story because it's a hot ticket item in Florida. And then they looked me up on the internet and they were like, you know, they couldn't believe all the stuff I do between having my own podcast show, um, you know, running marathons and then, you know, making content surrounding trucks and fitness. And then also working as like a, a coach and fitness advisor for drivers out there on the road. They're like, Hey, we need to do a story about just you. And I was like, really? They're like, yeah, this is, this is great stuff you got going on. So we, we had run that story and, you know, they, they did a really good job over there. Their reporter, Dave Puglisi, he, he really helped me out to, you know, highlight kind of all the stuff I'm doing out here on the road to make sure guys can live healthier lives and enjoy their time when they're at home and when they're, when they're on the job. So you're using your network and your influence on social media to raise awareness to these issues. You're going above and beyond just your network and reaching out to anyone that'll listen to raise attention on these issues. So you mentioned truck parking, which, uh, being a former driver myself, I could tell you it was bad back when I drove and I can only imagine how it is now just from the conversations I'm having with drivers. Um, I, I remember being trained to cut my clock an hour and a half early just so I can find the parking spot at night. How's that looking right now? I mean, is that kind of the same thing, an hour and a half, or do you need more time than that? Sometimes it could be more. I'd say the situation dictates. Uh, The stats are definitely out there. You know, there is 
one safe parking spot for every 11 trucks out there on the road. That, that I'd say that that data is very accurate. Um, I, I'd say the, the real estate and where you're at definitely matters. If you're in the cities, like, you know, if you're up in, if you're in the Los Angeles area, if you're in places like Florida, if you're in places like, you know, the Northeast, it's definitely harder, but for the most part, yeah, once you're getting at that two hour mark is really when guys need to start planning on, you know, looking for parking. No, I, hey, and I, I get it. I remember, uh, one of my first months out there on my own i was trying to find a truck parking spot and i i decided not to heed the advice of my trainer or my experience with my trainer and just kind of push my clock to that 11 hour mark i I pulled it in started looking for a parking spot around 10 and a half and i wound up having to bribe a blue beacon to use their parking lot because i ran out of hours and i couldn't do anything else and i'm like just let me shut down here so i totally understand that side of it what i generally are hearing from drivers right now though is when you're looking for that truck parking and you're trying to find those uh less than ideal spots even those are getting hard to find you know uh rest stops are filled up where you don't have food options uh you start seeing the shoulders on the side of the road filled up um i mean it is an issue yeah, it's a, it, more than anything, it's a safety issue. And for me, I, I mean, it's just, it easily links to one of the biggest over, you know, I think overriding issue of the industry is the turnover. Because the thing is with parking, it's like, okay, it's one thing if you could just find a place to park and whether that be on and on or off ramp or in some of these rest stops. But then, like you just mentioned, the amenities. If you're, if, if time and time again, you're, you're either, maybe you're running drive in or reefer where your appointment times are during the middle of the night or wherever. And you have to find yourself just parking where you can get it, finding these little, you know, hiding spots here and there. You, at that point, you still have no access to a toilet. You don't have access to like a decent bite to eat. You don't have access to a shower. And that's just such a far, you know, uh, 90 degree turn from what, you know, the rest of society gets to do on their own. And it's, and you know, you have plenty of drivers out there and I get, I, you know, I served in the military. I'm all about roughing it. Sometimes I can go a couple of days without a shower. I've gone on field outs. I've had to dig a hole. I get that, but that's not every truck driver, you know, and to make that the stand, yeah, to make that the standard and to just gaslight guys and to saying, well, I have to do it. So that's just the way it is. That's just setting the four precedent. And clearly we're not seeing that. The, and clearly that's not working because, you know, the lack of truck parking is, is definitely a factor of the turnover. Yeah, and there's a lot of factors that go into the turnover. The truck parking's one of them. Uh, Outside of truck parking, you got the companies and how they operate. You got your companies that are completely above board, but don't necessarily pay as well as some of the other companies. And then you got these smaller companies that are uh, pushing that line of gray area more onto their benefit by using false logs, uh, not providing truck parking, um, not sitting there running legally and putting the driver in these precarious situations where it's either you do what they're asking and you keep your job and you run illegally or you don't, and then you lose your job. Um, so it's what I've seen in my experience is it's either above board carriers that don't necessarily pay as much because they're trying to play within those rules while others don't, or you have the carriers that don't play by those rules and they have their own rule book and it's at the cost of the driver. Yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy to think. I mean, you, you can't really find the happy medium on a lot of things. You're, there's, there's two very extreme, extreme parts of the, uh, of the spectrum. When it, what, just when it comes to just your overall general freight of all kinds, if you drive and reaper, obviously when you get in the specialized thing, those seem to be the better routes, but it's harder work and still more hours and you need the, and you need the experience to get there. And so that's out of the conversation, but for your general freight, all kinds, you're, you're left down two roads of, of things. It's either, yeah, you have the mega carriers, which are an active participant in the CDL milling industrial complex, fast paced training. You have the CR England model of putting, you know, two or three drivers in one truck. You know, they put, you know, they put you out there. You're essentially just running teams. It's this whole meat grinder. They don't allow you to have PC. Their pay and benefit structures are crap. Or your other option is you can go to this sort of shady company, uh, you know, so, you know, somebody who's running cr- criminal, some sort of criminal operation where they're hacking into your logs, falsifying your e-logs, and they'll run you. You can get paid through them, but you don't get things like health insurance, PTO, benefits, 401k. All oh, they're just, but they'll give you unlimited miles. They don't give you anything on the back end, and you're still running running into the same issues you have to face, like parking. It's still on you. The like, if you get pulled into, if something happens to, 
you know, when you get a DOT inspection, that carrier is so, is so disconnected and won't see the fault. Like it's just, it's your CDL that's on the line. So like you just have two ways to go. And then, because when it comes to nicheifying being in freight, you know, if you, not everybody wants to pull tanker. Not everybody wants to do flatbed. They don't, they don't want to do that level of work. So if you want to stay in just general freight, those are your two options is going to these large, you know, carry large retail carriers or yeah, running in with the shady guys who are, who are doctoring up your logs. So that way you can run 6,000 miles a week. Uh, I believe on our next episode, we're pulling on a few different people and we're actually going to, because of the rules dropping in June and, and all of that, uh, we're actually going to be doing an episode on speed limiters, uh, which I've, I've previously, you know, heard you talk about and that kind of thing. Um, and, and a lot of opinions and bringing people on to talk about it from different perspectives. Uh, if you want to come back on, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I would love to come back on with speed limiters. Uh, I, I, like I said, there's a lot going on with that. I know, you know, I'm affiliated with the guys over at CDL drivers unlimited. Uh, they're a great organization over there, you know, with members like Lee and Leland Schmidt, great people. Um, they've been out to D.C. before. There's a lot going on with that. I know that there's a new bill that was introduced in the House. So we're definitely trying to uh, get some awareness and getting guys reaching out to their, you know, congressmen about hopefully getting that bill passed, which can, you know, hopefully prevent speed limiters. But because that's the thing is they're they're possibly coming very soon. I think you said June is the timeline the FMCSA is looking at. So, yeah, we're looking to get ahead of this. We're looking to get ahead of the FMCSA on it. But, yeah. Thanks for coming on, man. If someone wanted to check out what you're doing, how can they follow you or see what you're up to? Um, you guys can find me anywhere at Lombard Trucking, L-O-M-B-A-R-D Trucking. It's like Lombardi without the I. Um, please reach out to me. Um, you know, I, def- I help drivers, you know, get and stay fit over the road. Uh, get, you know, helping me out with, you know, any sort of diet tips you might need or just, get, you know, getting your steps in. Uh, and just general motivation overall. So feel free to Look me up, reach out. I'd love to talk with, you know, with any, I'll literally talk with anyone, everyone. I'm looking to get, you know, all of America's drivers, you know, on board being the best versions of themselves. Well, again, thank you. Be safe out there. And if anyone wants to check him out, it's Michael Lombard at Lombard Trucking. Follow him. He's got a lot of good stuff going on out there. A lot of awareness and a lot of tips on how to stay fit on the road. So Keep on fighting the good fight, and thanks for coming on Cents Per Mile, Michael. Thank you, gentlemen. You as well. You guys keep it up, too. We need your voices out there as well. You guys are doing great work. Uh, what do we got next, Paul? Well, uh, we got a couple more things. Uh, one, at the very end of the episode, figuring out if that was a hit or miss or not. Uh, but before that, it's time for the recruiting game, where we take a driver, we bring them on, and we have a mystery carrier. The mystery carrier pitches the driver. The driver asks the carrier questions. The driver then rates the carrier from a scale of one to five trucks and we reveal who the carrier is let's go the music gets me hyped every time you know (laughs) oh mystery carrier thank you for coming on and we're just going to throw you off the deep end tell us a little bit about yourself hello thank you for having me um so a little bit about us uh we are owned and we deliver one of the world's um most recognizable brand um we are going to be a no touch carrier 100% 100% no touch freight. Uh, we're going to average about 3,000 uh, miles per week. We run uh, anywhere from five to seven days out. Uh, we can't guarantee weekends, um, but we, we do guarantee those two days off. Um, we're going to run in the southeast and the midwest. We do not run any north we, uh, northeastern freight at all. We don't go above um, like the, the Maryland line. Um, we run Mac anthems that are three years or newer. Um, we're going to um, also, uh, we, we kind of have some dedicated carriers that we run for as well. So we have our parent company, but we also do some dedicated business. Um, some of our benefits are going to be, you know, we have, um, it, we have low cost benefits because of our, our, our owner. So we get some really great health benefit packages. Um, our company um, is going to sponsor a uh, 401k plan for you right off the bat. We um, do 5% matching. Um, we give two weeks of paid vacation in the first year, but from two to five years, you get three weeks, and from four years up, you get four weeks. Uh, we have nine paid holidays with a floating holiday in there. Um, and uh, we are um, also paying detention and accessorial pay, uh, $21 after 30 minutes. Oh, wow. I mean, that was way under 30 oh, yeah. minutes there. Way to go. Short and sweet. 
the mystery carrier presented their offer, Matthew. You've been doing this for 15 plus years. You know, tell us what questions you have or thoughts. Thoughts? Uh, so far, it sounds pretty good, you know, as, as far as the driver goes. Uh, maybe a, a few questions uh, as far as the driver themselves go. We have driver appreciation coming up later this year, and uh, I would like to know how they would uh, – appreciate their drivers show us you know show the driver how how much they're appreciated absolutely so we actually do it twice a year uh, we do it for driver appreciation week but we also do it um, in February as well where we have um, safety banquets so that was uh, that, that just happened we have uh, every single location has a safety banquet but then like for your question during driver appreciation, um, we also have every location has some type of banquet or um, celebration. Uh, we did do a large backpack for um, every single driver this year. I don't know what the the, the uh, item will be um, going into this year, but last year it was a large backpack. Um, and then all of the uh, executive leaders or uh, managers are all um, invited to come to those banquets. And I personally, um, you know, made my rounds and did about five or six last year. Um, so it's like a big to do. You know, we want to make sure that they feel appreciated. And not only on our driver's side, we also do that for uh, for our mechanics as well. I mean, that's extra nice that you all do it for your mechanics. Um, okay, uh, let's talk about driver driver safety for a few minutes. I mean, the truck that I drive now has a lot of bells and whistles, and sometimes it's annoying and distracting. Uh, I know for, you know, insurance reasons that y'all have them on there, but, you know, like I said, for a driver, sometimes it's just plum distracting. Uh, if a driver feels like it's distracting, how how would you rectify the situation? Yeah, we do have, to, we do use the Bendix system. Um, so I would push that to our safety department and, and um, have you work with them. Uh, safety is number one for us. We do have uh, an entire safety department that kind of monitors those Bendix um, videos and that type of thing. And I know that uh, we've had a couple of accidents this year where we've actually saved the driver and his license based on those. Um, but as far as it being distracting or, um, or the driver has concerns about it, I do say that we have a really uh, comprehensive uh, training program where we sit down and we really talk about why it's there and how it, how it is a benefit for the driver. But then we also have a safety department that really is there to listen and to um, listen to what the driver's feedback is and, um, you know, kind of work with them through all of those things. But we do use those kind of Bendix systems and that type of thing. I like the fact that y'all give like the two week vacation for, you know, the driver for the first year. Uh, it's great. I've never, uh, you know, I've never been with a company that's ever done that. Uh, you know, that's a, that's an actual A plus in, in my book and probably most, most other drivers. Yeah, the, um, the the vacation package, which actually was actually just changed at the beginning of the year, um, and so it was two weeks for the first five years, but they actually added that additional vacation uh, week for every single person in the company, whether it was a driver or an ELT member um, or a mechanic. So that was something that was added. Um, also, this past year, uh, we did a um, an end of the year bonus for all of our maintenance and our drivers. Um, that was something that was new last year as well, and, and hopefully will be continuing. It'll be something that they um, like evaluate every year. But um, the company that owns us had such a, a great year that um, that was something that they implemented and wanted to make sure that our frontline teammates and our drivers and mechanics also got that as well. So normally I won't hop in on this, but what's the average driver making? So on average, um, we do, I have a yearly rate here, but we have, we're averaging about 80 to 85,000 a year. 80 to 85,000 starting out with you guys a year. All right. That's, that's pretty decent in this economy. Mm -hmm. uh, so Matt, before, before we wrap up your session here, uh, you know, uh, any other questions that you have regarding this carrier before you rate them? I would like to see more carriers, you know, do kind of like a salary. I mean, you know, a lot of times drivers don't get the miles that they're promised, which, you know, makes their checks really low. But, you know, on a salary, it's a set set salary. I mean, I would like to see, you know, more companies do that. 
uh, is there, you know, any way that your company would do something like that? So I have been in talks with the president of the company, and that is absolutely something that he's thinking about. Um, I'm, I just pulled up some information for our regional offerings, but we do have local offerings, um, and in some of our locations, um, Charlotte, Bishopville, um, our College Park location, all of those have hourly opportunities um, to where we're kind of buying your day and not for miles. Um, and then we also have an hourly shuttle position um, kind of going between two of our locations up in um, the Stanton, Virginia area. So we are working in that that direction. When I started here almost a year and a half ago, we, we were only sent per mile. Um, and so we've added some of those offerings. And then um, I know that that's something that the, the owner of the, the, well, the president of the company is um, looking at finding how do we how do we do that and how do we do it um, so where it benefits the, the driver as well as us. All right, cool. Uh, so, yeah, so I think we're ready to rate the mystery carrier. What do you got for us, Matt? I would give this mystery carrier a four. Uh, the reason I gave it so high is because of their benefit package, their pay package, their vacation package. You know, it, it sounds really, really appealing to a driver, uh, you know, having that, that, that money there, uh, those benefits there you know, uh, that, that home time and that vacation there, you know, that means a lot to a driver. Four out of five trucks for this carrier. I think at this point, you know, uh, it's time to reveal who that carrier is. Can I get a drum roll, please, Josh? You have it, sir. It's a long drum roll. <laughs> Mystery carrier, who are you? I am with Red Classic. We are um, wholly owned by Coca-Cola Consolidated. So Red Classic, you guys been along how long now? We've been around for 12 years, um, but Coca-Cola has been around forever. Um, and then Coca-Cola Consolidated, I think we're in our 112th, 113th year, something like that. If a driver is listening to this and they were interested in one of your various positions and wanted to see if uh, you had anything in their area, how would they reach out to you? Um, go to redcrewcareers.com. Redcrewcareers.com. Matthew, thank you for coming on the show and participating in the recruiting game. And Amanda from Red Classic, thank you for taking some time out to share your offer. Congratulations on the four out of five trucks and looking forward to seeing you on again. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And thank you for the high rating. It's been exciting. It's been a lot of great takes on this show, and I'm looking forward to the future ones coming, Paul, but I think it's that time. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it was a pretty good one, uh, you know, and I, I'm pretty excited to talk about speed limiters the next time and uh, see if we can actually get somebody from the ATA willing to come on the show. <sighs> Who knows? You'll have to tune in. Uh, but that being said, uh, yeah, this has been Cents Per Mile. Um, check out uh, here in a second, and we'll see uh, if that was a hit or a miss. Thank you for tuning in to Cents Per Mile. I'm your host, Charles Gracie. And I'm your co-host, Paul Gibson. See you next time.